Hi, these are some frequent about enrolled bill reports and gubernatorial action. So first, what is an enrolled bill report? Well, the enrolled bill report, and it's most often referred to as an EBR, it's an acronym, of course. This is the analysis of the bill with information and a recommendation for final action by the governor. Is an EBR confidential? Yes. So while agency and department bill analyses, including those issued by the Department of Finance, can become a matter of public record once they've been approved for distribution by the governor's office, these EBRs remain confidential as private communications with the governor, and they're not subject to release under the Public Records Act or the PRA. So when is an EBR actually produced? Once an enrolled bill reaches the governor's desk for final action, these EBRs are produced for the governor and his or her senior staff to consider the merits of the bill pending on the governor's desk. What actually is an enrolled bill? Well, basically an enrolled bill is the final version of the bill that's passed both houses of the legislature and is pending action by the governor. Now recall that California's governor has three choices when a bill reaches his or her desk to sign the bill and it becomes a statute, veto the bill by returning it with reasons to the legislature, or allow the bill to become law without the governor's signature. For which legislative measures are EBRs produced? They're prepared for bills, but not for constitutional amendments or any of the three resolutions, concurrent, joint, or house resolutions. And that's because these other types of measures are not acted upon by the governor, only bills. Who produces an EBR? Generally, there can be three EBRs prepared for the governor's office, Department of Finance, the relevant agency through which they do it by their department uh, that has jurisdiction over the subject matter of the bill, and legislative council for certain um, technical type items. So what's usually contained in the DOF EBR? Now, although the Department of Finance's focus is primarily fiscal in nature, occasionally the Department of Finance does raise policy concerns with a bill. And in terms of bill analyses versus EBRs, the general rule is that for bills that were opposed during the legislative process, the DOF, uh, their EBR recommends a veto naturally. On the other hand, if DOF supported a bill during the legislative process, then its recommendation on the EBR is usually to sign. Now note that DOF can take a neutral position on a bill and simply not recommend it, either a signature or a veto. What's usually contained in a state agency EBR? Well, again, the relevant state agency and department makes a recommendation in its EBR submitted to the governor's office. And the ones that have jurisdiction over a bill's subject matter or that they might be directly impacted by the uh, bill's provisions, those are the ones that submit the EBR and, of course, explain what those impacts are. And naturally, the governor and the senior staff want to understand the regulator, for example, their view of how a bill might impact the regulated community or the program that they actually administer. What is the Office of Legislative Counsel? Um, why do they have an EBR? Well, the OLC may prepare an EBR for a bill that the legislature sends to the governor to, for example, identify any conflicts between this bill and any other bills passed during the same session. And this is to ensure that later enacted bills don't chapter out early enacted bills. So, for example, the Legislative Council EBR may recommend the order in which the governor signs the bills, affecting the same code sections, for example. So basically, the Leg Council EBR addresses the technical aspects of the bill for the benefit of the governor and the governor's senior staff.